Yes, we are ready to go. Welcome to day 239 of quarantine for, well, me. And today I'm gonna to be doing the same thing that I did yesterday, which is coding. But unlike yesterday where I was fixing bugs, today we're gonna to be doing some feature development. Hey. And if you read the title of this video, you know that a unit conversion is what's being coded today. Now, the reason I'm actually doing this is for a cooking website that I run called Saffron. It's been a, well, very highly requested feature. So I said, why not? Let's code it up today. Now this sounds incredibly easy, you know, just converting centimeters to inches. That's just like some multiplication. But with cooking, it's actually kind of more complex. And well, let me go get something real quick. Okay, I am back and check out these lovelies. Yes, these are some vine ripened tomatoes. And to accompany this, I have this giant carrot, which I got from my friend who used to be an Angular developer. Now, why am I showing you these tomatoes and this carrot? Well, what happens when you're converting amounts when it comes to cooking is you got stuff like carrots and you got stuff like tomatoes. And these things are gonna be like one cup of tomato, one cup of carrots, and see if I need to convert that to say grams, one cup of tomatoes and one cup of carrots will go to like different amounts of grams. Now, if I wasn't such a lazy programmer, I'd actually like go cut those things up and measure them out and show you like, look, those are like five grams different or something. But I'm a lazy programmer, so you're just gonna have to use your imagination. And I think you get my gist. Depending on the ingredient that you have, the formula that you use to convert from one unit to another changes. So to program something like that would be a ton of effort because I now have to store the conversion amount for each unit per each ingredient. And well, you heard earlier, I'm a lazy programmer, so I don't do stuff like that. And a lot of times an estimation is gonna be just fine. Unless you're baking, baking is very important. You gotta be very precise. But other types of cooking, you know, it's just like a pinch and a swish, and there you go, that's your soup. So I've actually thought through the process of how I want this feature to work, and the most obvious approach is something like this. And I think this is the best if you can pull this off well, where it just you know, has a little toggle, and it takes all your ingredients, and it switches between like metrics and cups, or if you want something else, something like this. And you don't have to think about it, you just toggle between them. But the problem is, this is very doable if you're manually doing the conversion. But if you're doing it automatically, it's hard to know how to do the conversion. And what I mean by that is take a look at this. We got grams up here for the butter. And we convert that over, it converts it over to sticks, not cups. Although that's a pretty easy conversion to go by. Um, but same thing with the soft light brown sugar here. Right? We go to cups to grams. But if I come down here to the packet of milk chocolate morsels, we can see it is grams. And then when it's converted over, that goes to ounces. So how do I know when we go to grams to ounces or grams to pounds or grams to cups? Basically, you don't know. This is another place where I'm trying to simplify what I have to do as the programmer and also as a result, the user will have more accurate results. So instead of trying to guess what the grams or the unit should be converted to, I'm just going to have them choose. So I talked this over with my mom and she's the designer for this project. So she whipped up a little bit of a design for us here. And this is what I'm actually gonna be building. So this is a modal that we're gonna have for the ingredients. And how it works is you actually can select different ingredients and convert them over to the amount that you want or the unit that you want. So how it's gonna work, you can be like, check, 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 you know, these three. And then I could come down here, I can select the box and be like, I want those three converted to pounds but I wanted these two down here converted to ounces. All right, you are now caught up on everything. So we're gonna start coding. It's not functional yet, but I just laid everything out to try to match what I have in Figma over here. And I didn't run into any troubles doing that. It looks pretty good so far, but a few things that I ended up doing is first off, I'm not showing the select field until one of these is checked off. So let's say I click this one and this one and then it'll show up right. So if I unselect one, it'll disappear. Reason for that is I want them to check something off before like doing unit stuff down here. And the idea is once they select like a unit, it unselects here, but you'll see what I mean after I add the functionality for that. And then the other thing I ended up doing is not adding a checkboxes to things that cannot be converted. Like we just have two eggs here that, that can't doesn't have a unit, so I'm just gonna ignore it. 
and we also got this working. <sighs> yeah, that's not good. When I go to Google, it doesn't tell me how many grams are in a cup. And that, I had to look up a little chart. And so I have this chart right here that just tells me like, butter is this much cups to grams and dry goods are this much cups to grams. <laughs> So I got Figma up here on the right. On the left, this is what I changed. First thing you may notice is I split up the volume and weight into two different categories. Reason being is when you select some volumes and you select some weights, it's kind of weird if you try converting them together. They need to be converted separately uh, because they're in kind of different categories, if you will. So that's why I split those up because it gets funky otherwise. And so the other thing is there's just a lot less items now. Reason why is I realized no one wants to convert teaspoons. Uh, metric and imperial people all around the world love teaspoons. So that is well and good. So I'm not going to touch those. So what that means is I decided to just not show these items. Because what it got to a point is a lot of recipes, there's just a bunch of items that could not be converted. Or it didn't make sense to convert them. Okay, so then we have, we can click on these things and then we can convert them. So these are the ways I can convert. Now within volume, these are the easy ways. Fluid, milliliter, liter, cup. Those are all within the same volume class. And so that's an easy conversion, use a formula, done. Now what gets a little bit more complex is if I try to convert this into a weight. Reason being, each ingredient is different. So this is where estimating comes in. And so what I have here is I can convert to grams in a couple different ways. So I can convert it based on the type of ingredient it kind of is. So if your ingredients here are kind of similar to sugar, I can press that and I'll convert them over. And now we have all these converted over to grams and now they're weights, so it jumps over here. That part's a little weird. I don't know if I want it to jump over here. Also, if there's no categories, I need to hide this. I haven't done that yet because like there's nothing in volume right now. I think I'm just about done with this, so I want to show you the full experience. So pretend I am a British lad, and I have this recipe here, and it's got stuff like pounds in it, and there's a couple places where there's some cups, and I don't know what those words mean. So I come up here, I press convert units, and it nicely splits into volume and weight. And then from here, I can go ahead and just do individual conversions if I want. But in this case, I don't really care. I want to convert them all into milligrams. So I'm just going to click here, select them all. And I'm going to press what I want to convert over. And let's go to milliliters, not MGs. MGs would be in our weight category, which we can convert. Uh, but being the British lad that I am, well, British lads use grams, but... I don't know, I'm just gonna keep it MLs. All right, and our weight over here, I'll convert this over to a gram as well. And there you go. I can just press save conversion after I've done these two things. Save conversion like that, and then it just pops in the values into our form here, bam, so perfect. I can now start cooking. Now, the reason why I'm not just like doing this conversion automatically, I hinted this at this earlier, is because I don't always know what you want to convert it to. Like I could have also picked this to be an OZ if we wanted to, and also, can convert like some of these to liters just for funsies um, but yeah so that's the full experience i'm not sure if i'm entirely happy with what it looks like this is what it looks like when it's really big so it looks like this so it's like a rare occasion where this is going to come up so i don't know if i'm going to spend more time on this we will see bam there you go a little behind the scenes of how i do product development for saffron i'm not quite going to be releasing this feature because well, we have a React Native app and I need to build out some kind of UI for that to go along with this. But the core engine is going to be basically the same thing, which is going to be really nice. So if you're a Saffron user, look forward to unit conversions. And until next time, I don't, I don't have a thing that I say at the end. Peace, I guess. No, that's not very good. <laughs>